Welcome to the First Day in Me Church Manassas broadcast, where the Holy Spirit empowers us to come together in the spirit of unity, ready to work and willing to serve. Our pastor, Reverend Etoria V. Goggins, and the entire Fame family are so excited that you are with us right now for another dynamic preached word of God. First day in me of Manassas, why would you stop the work? You may ask what work? I'm talking about kingdom work because the work of the kingdom can never stop. With sound biblical teaching, prayer, and spiritual impartation, we know that souls will be saved, lives changed, relationships restored, and the community will be empowered by the power that works in us. So once again, welcome to the First Day in the Church Manassas broadcast. Be blessed. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from every fear. Those who look on him are radiant, they'll never be ashamed. They'll never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me, and he saved me from my enemies, the Son of God surrounds his saints. He will deliver them.
magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And God, we've come this morning to magnify your name. We come this morning, God, to give you all the praise, to give you all the honor and the glory for which you are due. And so, God, we ask now in the name of Jesus that as you continue to bless us in this worship experience, that you would speak a word to us in this house today. Speak a word that will strengthen us. Speak a word that will help us. Speak a word that may even convict us, God, but convict us to the point that we will go out of here and make some real changes in our lives. God, don't let us leave here the same way that we came. So I pray now, Father, that you would decrease me and increase your spirit and your will. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture this morning is going to be read from Psalm 127, verse 1. Psalm 127, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. Unless the Lord builds the house. Healthy families are at the heart of strong societies. We know that family formation affects the outcomes of children and general well-being. But all around us, we see the results of the breakdown of the family. Some of the problems stem from mothers and fathers who do not take their roles seriously as parents. It seems no matter where we look, we see hostility, we see opposition, we see division and rebellion. Marriages and families tend to be at war zones and disaster areas. Homes are not places because they are not places of peace anymore. Home is not a place of joy. Home is not a place of contentment. Homes are havens where there is conflict. Homes are now places where there is intimidation and separation. And some mother or father goes to bed worried because they don't know where their child is or what their child is doing. And the truth of the matter is that home has become one of the least desired places to be. Husbands don't want to be there. Wives are abused mentally, emotionally, and physically and don't want to be there. And not only wives are abused, but husbands are abused, keep looking straight ahead, mentally, emotionally, and physically. We got some women beating up on some men. I ain't going to get no help this morning. It's all right. <laughs> but husbands are abused as well. And children who can't have their way and don't want to be there because they can't have their way. Some mother or father is struggling right now. Lord, have mercy, because you are not getting along with one of your children. The simple words, good morning, somehow turns into an argument. Some houses can be considered major construction areas, and hard hats are required for flying debris. I must tell you this morning that all around us, we see the results of the breakdown of the family. And this is not new. Satan attacked the home and the family in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. They were created in a perfect and harmonious relationship. They were in a perfect environment. For them, everything was perfect. Everything was ideal. Everything was just right. Then all of that changed when they disobeyed God. And as a result, sin entered in, and it's never been the same since. And Satan has not changed his strategy, church. He was a liar from the beginning, and he is a liar today. He is a deceiver, and his goal is always to, to divide and conquer. 
From Adam to today, families have faced an onslaught of problems. Well, what is affecting the family today? Infidelity is affecting the family. Lying and deception and jealousy is affecting the family. Adultery is affecting the family. Divorce is affecting the family. Disobedient and rebellious children are affecting the family. A spouse working all the time and never coming home or coming home late, Lord have mercy, is affecting the family. The overworked single parent trying to hold down two and three jobs and just dog tired. That is affecting the family. Elderly grandparents raising grandchildren. Alternative lifestyles. Cyber bullying, sexting and texting is affecting the family. And when migrant children are involuntarily crammed in cells like concentration camps, that is deeply affecting the family. And all of these things tell us that the family is in trouble. And so we need an extreme makeover, Christian edition. And God has to be the architect of the family. He designed the, bru the blueprint and laid out everything. Home improvement for the family will never happen apart from God. And home improvement begins with us improving our relationship with God. If you're going to make it, church, if you're going to survive, if you're going to persevere, if you're going to continue and endure, there is an essential element that must be present in your family. The text says, except the Lord, which tells us without the Lord, it is useless, it is futile, it is pointless, it is a waste of time to build anything. Is there anybody in here who has discovered that in your own life that there are some things Things that you cannot substitute or find a substitute for? We have all kinds of substitutes. We have uh, sugar substitutes with Splenda and Equal. We even have hair substitutes. Keep looking straight ahead. Weaves and lace front wigs and extensions. And we can't forget about the men with their toupees and hair transplants. Substitutes, substitutes. But they will give you something that will hold you temporarily. Substitutes will satisfy and appease you for a moment. But substitutes won't last long. Why? Because a substitute is an alternative. It's a stand-in. It's a replacement. And you may run your family. You may run your relationships. You may run your home with substitutes. But I've come to tell tell you that whenever you have a substitute, when you substitute God as a foundation, you're going to have problems. When you substitute God as the foundation and the center of your life, your home is going to be in trouble. I've got to go old school and tell you like Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Ain't nothing like the real thing. But we like substitutes. A substitute is a replacement. When you look, for, when you look more closely and examine a thing, a substitute cannot stand the test of time. It is only temporary and will not last. If you want to experience the abundant life, if you want to experience peace that passes all understanding, there is an essential element, there is an essential ingredient, ingredient that will change your life. The Lord, except the Lord build the house. They that labor, labor in vain. And so, church, there can be no substitute for what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his or her soul? You can make it without a lot of things, but I've come to remind you today that you cannot make it without the Lord. And that's why every now and then you got to fall on your knees and cry out, Father, I stretch my hands to thee, no other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, where can I go? And so if we have strong families, we will have strong communities. And Psalm 127 tells us uh, what God can do for the family. The text says, except the Lord builds the house. The Lord is a master builder. If God is involved, he will establish your house. And if you're going to have anything worthwhile, if you're going to have anything valuable, anything meaningful, you don't ever want to bring a builder in at the end of the building process. The reason why some of us have lopsided lives and crooked houses is because we have brought the builder in at the end. We tried to construct it. We tried to put it together ourselves. We tried to do it on our own. And we didn't know a two by four from a six by four. And we tried to build our own house and then ask the Lord to bless our mess. 
But you got to bring God in at the beginning. He wants to be God building your life at ground zero. You have to allow him to establish your home. He has to be the one to set it up. He has to be the one to lay the foundation. If God lays the foundation, your home will not crack. But many of us get the plans and the blueprints, uh, and then we go out and subcontract it ourselves. Lord, have mercy. And then we wonder why it doesn't work. Uh, but God wants to be in it from the beginning to the end. Paul says in Philippians 1, 6, be confident of this one thing, uh, that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. If you let the Lord build your house, uh, he will establish you. Psalm 127, written by Solomon, really tells us his observations about the futility of life apart from God found in Ecclesiastes. He knew that without the right priorities, his work was in vain. Unless God blesses our efforts, unless God is a part of what we are doing, it doesn't mean a thing. All of us, our lives are meaningless if we leave God out of the picture. And so, church, if you want a strong family, you got to work at it and God will give you what it takes but you've got to work at it except the Lord build the house they that labor labor in vain it does not say that we should not labor it just says that without the Lord we labor in vain and today we work at everything else but the family you work at being a good sorority member instead of being a good wife you work at being a, a good mason instead of being a good husband. Some men spend more time in their man cave than they do with their families. Some men spend more time in the weight room trying to build up their bodies than they spend time with their wife and children trying to build their family. Some women spend more time with their girlfriends talking about everything that's wrong with their husbands instead of trying to make the marriage work. Oh my God, it's so quiet in here. <laughs> but it takes work to build a marriage and it takes work to raise a family. It's not easy being a parent. Do I have any witnesses out there? It's not easy being a parent. When you mix in finances and expectations and in-laws, it's not easy being a parent. When you mix in conflicting parenting styles, it's not easy being a parent. When you mix in stepchildren and baby mama drama, it's not easy being a parent. When you mix in threatening ex-spouses for those that have that, when you mix in role confusion and power struggles and custody battles, it's not easy being a parent. But God wanted me to remind you this morning, it takes work to build a marriage and it takes work to raise a family. It takes effort to raise your child. You go through stressful moments, Lord have mercy, to raise a child. The television cannot raise your children. The daycare cannot raise your children. The school cannot raise your children. The church cannot even raise your children. You must raise your children. And if God is not involved in the blueprint of your family and in the plans of your home, there will be emptiness in your house. Except the Lord build the house. They that labor, you work in vain. You're just spinning your wheels. That's what the word means in vain. It's empty. It's sad to say that we have a lot of empty houses keep looking straight ahead. The lights are on, but the house is empty. It's well furnished, but the house is empty. The AC is working, but the house is empty. The stove is working and the milk are prepared but your home is empty the family room is functional is functional but the home is empty there are people inside but the house is empty you even have a Bible but it's still empty dress to kill on Sunday morning but you're empty singing praises and shouting on Sunday but you're empty big title and position in the church but empty at home important in the community but empty at home People around you are oppressed with what you have, but at the end of the day and in the midnight hour, when you go home, all you have is emptiness. Why are people sharing their concerns and issues with the Facebook community? Because there is an emptiness in the house, and they are seeking acceptance and a place to belong. Emptiness will make you do some strange things. Emptiness will make you find yourself with people that you shouldn't be with. 
Emptiness will make you find yourself in some places that you shouldn't be. Emptiness will make you find yourself doing some things that you should not be doing. That is emptiness. But if God is not in the center of whatever is happening in your home, then you don't have anything but an empty house. If God is involved in the family, then God has his eyes on you. Verse 1 says, unless the Lord watches over the city. What is the city? The city is a group of families who live clo in close proximity, who live together. The word watches mean to guard, protect, and save lives. And so David is saying, God can protect your family. But the family needs protection in today's world. And when God has his eye on you, it's like a hedge of protection around you because God is always watching you. I love it because God never slumbers. God never sleeps. Have you ever tried to stay up and keep watch but found yourself dozing? You can physically be alert. Lord, have mercy. But sleep to some stuff that your natural eye cannot see in your house. Your child strung out on drugs and you don't even see it. But God has his eye on the family. You need somebody with good vision. Have you ever had things to get dark in your family when you couldn't even see which way you were going? Then you ought to be celebrating today because you have somebody who is watching over you. Somebody's watching over you and your family and God knows everything that is happening. My grandmother used to say, he sits high and looks low. I know that's a cliche, but it's true. God sits high and he looks low. I didn't understand then, but I understand now. She was simply saying that God's eyes move across this earth. God's got an all-seeing eye, and that's why he can protect us from dangers seen and unseen. Just because you see it doesn't mean he can't see it. That's why the old folks said, guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Psalm 127 tells us what God can do for the family. When God is involved, he will allow you and he will allow me to be at ease. Verse 2 says, but those who are beloved. When God is involved in your family, he allows you to be at ease. He doesn't necessarily make it easy all the time, but he will give you ease. You don't have to have everything going your way, but you'll be at ease. All you need, Lord have mercy, is something on the inside that's working that will give you ease. There are a whole lot of folk tossing and turning and stressed out, burnt out and depressed. But if you let God be in charge, God will give you ease. That son of yours may not change, but God will give you peace in the midst of the storm. That girl may not change, but God will give you peace. That husband may not act right. That wife may not act right, but God will give you a peace. And they'll be wondering why you snowing so hard <laughs> when all stuff is breaking out. Why? Because God has given you an ease. God has given you a peace to rest in that. No wonder Paul said, be careful for nothing. But in everything, through prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. And then the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. Does anybody have any peace in here? All God wanted me to share to, with you today that in your family relationships with your children, you got to let God be in charge. God can help you build your family. Amen, amen, amen. That's all the time we have for today's broadcast. And we pray that you have truly been blessed. First AME Church Manassas is located at 10313 South Grand Avenue in Manassas, Virginia, and we encourage you to come by and visit at any time. Thursday night Bible study starts at 7 p.m. Sunday mornings at 8.30, we have church school classes for all age groups, and our dynamic worship service starts at 10 a.m. For more information, call 703-361-8791 or just visit us on the web at famechurch.com. Be blessed.
We don't have much time. And action! Hello, church. I am so excited to announce the launch of a new ministry here at First AME Church of Manassas. As you can see, I look a little different from all of you, but don't hold that against me. Yes, I am a puppet, and puppets can do ministry too. Amen? So, as you may have guessed by now, First AME Church is about to start a puppet ministry. The name of this ministry is In His Hands, and Reverend Lillian Moore will be the coordinator. Brother Deontay Stubbs will be assisting. We will have a hallelujah good time ministering to church members as well as those in the community. But some important people are missing. You. We cannot have a ministry without your help. Voice actors, seamstresses, crafters, stage builders, writers, and of course, puppeteers are needed. If you would like to be a part of this ministry, no experience is required. You can learn a new skill. All you need to do is sign up after church in the fellowship hall. Maybe I can meet you in person. I hope to see you soon. I'm gonna lift my hands and give him glory. I'm gonna lift my hands and give him glory.